All right. Here we go. Put this right here. Get the people blowing around. All right, folks at home and folks here, we are uh, talking about two additional transformations. So before we had the transformation that was just translating, right? Just moving it up, down, left, right. And I kind of gave the analogy, like you go to different parts of the world, the same item, you know, the same thing you're talking about, I'll have different words for it, but it's the same thing, right? Move it over, move it down. It's just in a different place. The shape doesn't change at all. These are two additional ones we're talking about. Reflection, right? Reflection, uh, kind of we had it when I, when I did it like this and I pointed at this and it's upside down. Really, it's been reflected and switched the orientation. And that happens a lot when you have, um, when you're dealing with a mirror, you know, of course, you're dealing with a mirror, reflection off the water, all that stuff. And we're going to talk about two, three different kinds of reflection. Reflection across the x-axis, across the y-axis, and across y is equal to x, which is a little more complicated, but we'll get into that as we go. The first thing that I'm introducing here is just more the intuitive. Like, what is this? How does it move? How does it rotate? How does it flip? Okay. Then we're going to talk about how each point moves, just like translations we did for each point. Okay. So we have reflections and we have rotations. Now, have you guys seen this before with the quadrants one, two, three, four? Have you seen that before? They're labeled that way? You seen them? Okay. Wasn't sure if that was a standard. Uh, that's great. So it always starts at one, two, three, four, and rotation is naturally counterclockwise. But that's kind of intuitive because it's one, two, three, four. That's the direction it goes. Okay. So you know, I could say it rotates 360 degrees, and I get back to this point. Okay? How else could I get back to this point? What's another thing I could do? I could do a rotation of 360 degrees. What else could I say? Get clever with it. What else could I say? Another way. Do I, do I have to go this way? That's positive 360. What else could I do? Negative 360? Okay. Positive 360. What if I go two times around? Well, 180 is halfway. So all the way around is 360. Two times around? 720. If you're a skater, you, you know those numbers. 1080, all these things. No you skates in here? No, me neither. I just know that. Uh, so we have rotations that way. We can distinguish it as positive, but we can go the other way to make it negative. Okay. Now, if we have this in mind, and we have it in mind that the rotation is around the origin, then really what we're looking at are these movements. Right? We're starting at that, that initial side, and we rotate 90 degrees. We're going to be rotating one fourth of the way all the way around. 180 rotation is halfway, and 270 is three quarters of the way. And those are really the only ones. I mean, that we're going to mainly deal with. Uh, the rotation could be different, but for math one, we're just 90, 180, and 270. 360 would be all the way around, and that would get you right back to the exact same point. Okay. Now, if I am looking at a reflection. Let me just pull this in here. Because the reflection, we have a few different options. So let's see how, how well we understand this. Let's put the letter in. Now let's put the letter, uh, let's do P. Okay. So we just have a letter P. This isn't for this isn't for like you don't have to write this down. Just like go with me with it. All right. If I and those at home as well, if I reflect this across the y-axis, across the y-axis, what quadrant is the P going to end up in? And maybe even maybe even do a real rough draft on yours. You know, just make a this, put the P, and draw the other. Where is it going to go, and how is it going to be oriented? Okay. So go ahead and make like a little jot, a note, if you have to think it out. And then, uh, good, Calvin. Uh, Camilla, help us out in here. First quadrant, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then if, it, if it's reflected, is it going to be like this over in the first quadrant? 
it's going to be that upside down. It looks like it's about two over. So it's going to be like, like that. I guess it's going to be a nine. Oh, okay. And then how about if we, we start in the beginning again? And I take the P and someone else uh, at home. What if I reflect this across the X axis? Reflect it across the X axis. Where's that going to Where's that going to put it? And what's it going to look like? So the X axis is here. So we're reflecting it. You know, Y axis is like a book, right? But X axis is top to bottom. All right, good Calvin, good Orlando, good Marco. Where's it going to be, guys? What do you think? Yeah, let me let me put these here because it's easy to go this way. All right, one, two, three, four, and it's going to be it's going to become a, a B. Ah, okay. And then the last one looks like a lowercase B. Good. Uh, the last one is if we start here, and this is the hard one. Because if you look at reflection, one of the reflections we had to do as well was across the line y x. Y is equal to x. Now think about what y is equal to x is saying. Y is equal to x is when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. x is 3, y is 3, and so on. 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3. So this is my y is equal to x. This is y is equal to x. So this one is kind of tricky. You might be able to figure out what quadrant it goes in, but can you visualize it too? This is spatial reasoning. Spatial intelligence is one of the eight intelligence. Right? So math is related to spatial. Music is related to spatial. So it's not just you're a math person or an English person. It's all these kinds of different types of intelligence. So this actually develops it. If you can't see it in your head right away, you can develop this. So what do you guys think? What quadrant, what quadrant do you guys think this is going to be? If it reflects across... X is equal to Y, or Y is equal to X. Where's it going to end up? Yeah. Down, here? Down here? Can anybody see how it's going to end up? Dang, I, I gave myself a tricky one here. Let's see. Fourth quadrant, like a D. Hmm. All right, one sec. That's going to be here. Gonna go here. <laughs> Jeez. That's reflected across. Can you see it now? Can you see a little bit now? Okay. And it's not intuitive. It's not like something you could just kind of go out and think about it really quick. But this would be a reflection across the x is equal to y axis. Okay. So this is more kind of just giving you intuitive uh, feel about it. Let's go ahead and name the quadrant again. Let's do this one. And these are going to be quick, people at home. This is going to be really quick. We're going to look at translation first then rotation, then reflection, okay? So um, this isn't something you necessarily have to write down unless you know a lot of examples help. But go ahead and tell the person next to you, name that quadrant. If I have a translation of zero, negative seven, where is the shape? Where is my prime shape? This is the pre-image, where's the image gonna show up? So actually, yeah, let's just do the first one together. Uh, tell your neighbor where that translation is gonna end up. What do you think? What do you think? So translation is what we did before. It's where it just moves. Just moves. Zero for X, negative seven for Y. So where is this guy going to end up? What do you think? Yeah. Because there's zero. Right? So remember, guys, this is zero, negative seven. That's talking about your X and your Y movement. Okay. Now, when you're looking at a whole shape, you have to visualize the whole shape moving. Zero left to right, but seven down. And the way we would figure this out using the table method is to look at each individual point and say, well, if I move this point, T, zero, negative seven, zero, negative seven, zero, negative seven, then I end up with the whole shape moving. That's how we move the shapes. That's how we translate. Okay. So it looks like we are going to end up with it down here. It's going to be negative seven. So one, two, three, four, five, right. So that's for our transformation, translation, zero, negative seven, just moving it down. So this is kind of a review, that first one's a review. Now, 
let's do a rotation 270 degrees and think about that for a second think about that for a second and then tell your neighbor what you think you can speak up you don't have to, you don't have to speak. what do you think that's going to where is that going to end up quadrant three okay so remember where it's starting it's starting over here in quadrant two already so tell your neighbor you're thinking like where how what how did you conclude that information if it rotates 270 like is there an intermediate thought you can have to also kind of get closer to 270 so tell you tell your name what do you think that's one way to think of it okay okay all right quadrant one okay over here and how did you conclude that what was like your your kind of like little note you had in your head to, to figure that out I see. I, I see what you mean. So you're saying if it, if the shape was in quadrant one, 270 would get you here. But then you said, well, I started in two and it went around, so we end up with that. Okay. Any other strategies? That's a good mental math. Yeah, what was your strategy? It's one less. Excellent. So that's good. Going all the way around 360, so 270 is 90 less. So it would end up here. It's 270. Okay, anybody else have a third one? Third way? Yeah, David? Yeah. So 90 jump, 90 jump, 90 jump. See, that's three different ones, and I was even thinking one totally different. Uh, you can go with whichever one works, but think of it this way 180 is always going to be across from it. 180 is always across from it. And that's kind of like my the middle point that I think about well, if it's 270, it's one past that. If it's 90, it's one less. So, four different ways to think about visualizing it. Okay. The more ways that. Uh, how about this one? Reflection across the x axis. Across the x axis. Where's that going to end up? Oh, wait, we have to do this one. So this ends up like, yeah, that's hard for me to visualize too. Where did the rotation end up? It's going to be like, that? Wait. Like that. It hurts my brain. You guys do? All right, so this is where it's like, it's going to get confusing if you're like, rotate, then move, then flip, right? That's why we have to use the table method next. So I'm not even going to get super complicated. But that did, that did, uh, you know, created some brain cells with that focus on that. But where is this re reflection across the x axis? That one's like a little easier to visualize, probably. Where's that going to end up? What quadrant? Down here, right? So it's going to end up. The same distance, right? It's going to be here, but it's going to be the same distance, but just below down there. Okay. okay. All right, we got 20 minutes. Let's do these ones real fast. So look at all three and make a list, you know, quadrant two, quadrant one, quadrant three. So go ahead and try to get all three and then check with your neighbor. Let me see if I can make this a little bit more zoomed in. All right. So we have T, two, one, rotation, 108, reflection, y-axis. So just drop down real quick. You know, the first one is quadrant one, second one, quadrant four, and so on. OK. OK. And then just double check with your neighbor. Say, hey, can you this? I'm supposed to be checking this. All right, and then let's see. Do a little bit of checking with your neighbors. Okay. 
where the janitor is always like, what the heck are they doing in this season? <laughs> I had an escape room in my in my room two years ago. Oh, it's crazy. It took me. I, I built like a laser course. I built all these electronics for it. I had a metal detector kids out in the yard. I had all this stuff. Um, it took me probably about two hundred hours of work to like even set it up. And only one out of thirty six groups got close to solve it. So it was hard. You like escape rooms too? Yeah. I, I'm a. I'm, uh, I've gotten out of two out of three that I've done so far. I um, I like like so like the Halloween stuff and the sisters that they wanted to go to the They did? Like, oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, no, but they were too scared. <laughs> too scared? Yeah. Dang it. Well, next time. All right, guys, let's, let's name it off. Which one uh, translate to one? Where's that going to end up? What quadrant? Did that even get out of the quadrant? No, right? Because look, it just goes two to the right, up one. That doesn't get out of the quadrant. It ends up with like right here. Okay. okay, how about a rotation 180? Quadrant. Quadrant two. It's going to end up rotating and be okay. around that. Okay. How about a reflection across the y axis? That one's easier. I could definitely do that in my head. Something like that? Okay. All right. And just notice, if you're like, I can't visualize it, am I going to do poorly on this? No, nah, you won't. Because now we're going to do it with a table. We'll probably have time to do two of them. Uh, this is something at home to uh, go ahead and just make the graph. And then make a quick table that just has four columns. This is how I want you to do the homework, though. So make sure you get a, at least one good example in this. And uh, you can use graph paper or, or whatever you, you'd like. Is it kind of hard to see, guys? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that got, that got better. That's better, huh? A little better? OK. Sometimes the glare, if the, if the door is causing a glare or the windows, like David is the glare. You got glare from the windows? Are you good? Okay. All right, folks at home. So let's go ahead and just get this first one. And this is going to be showing the table method. Okay, so if the intuitive part that you were doing, we did before, was harder, then uh, really focus on this method because you'll have to depend on it. And if you're if you're quick with jotting all this information down, you could put in the pre-image. I know that A is negative three five. I know that B is negative five one. C negative two one. Okay, so you can get that information in there already if you're quick. You're you're faster. You're the fast one. <laughs> who's who's been? Uh, let's see. I can tell. I don't know. All right. So you guys, uh, these points A, B, and C, those are the pre -image. Remember that any transformation is can be a transformation of each of the vertices, each of the corners of your shape. So 
So um, at home, this is how we're also going to do the homework. We're going to do the table method. And let's put the transformation in here. So I'm just going to put it over all of them to save some time today. There's no need to uh, do it through all of it. You could say it's applying to x, y. Okay. And now with the conversion, now's where I need to go back to my notes. Because we're talking about a rotation. And the rotations are really specific. The rotations are really specific. We already learned this in our notes. Rotating around the origin, always. And we know that 90 degrees, 180, and 270 have different ways that the point converts. So the first thing we need to know is how does uh, rotation of 270 convert X and Y? And what does it do? What does it do? It, it changes it from X, Y. You take whatever X and Y are and you reposition them so that it's Y negative X. And that might be a little bit tricky. That might be confusing to start, and that's fine. Now watch. Let's look at what this means. For point A, it's X and Y, right? X, Y. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just make my new, my new conversion. I'm going to make a big uh, ordered pair here. And really what I have is I end up putting y here uh, and negative x here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a negative and a little space for the x to go in there. Okay. So let's look to see what was our y. Our y was 3, uh, 5. <laughs> and what was our x? Negative 3. You see how I set that up there? So now all I have to do is work out the positive negatives and we're done. So this is, well, after we do the second one, you'll see how this comes really quick here. But we're going to have 5, 3 as my prime. This is a prime. So what did I do? I know with 270, 270, you take whatever point x, y, and you switch it. You take whatever y is, you put it in place of x. You take x, you make it negative, you put it in place of y. If it was a 90 degree turn, we would just orient it like this. There's 180, we approach it this way. So now we have our new A prime. Now let's see how is this going to look for the next one. Make your order pair. Put a place for Y, it's there already. And we'll put this here. And remember what we're doing is we're putting Y in the place here. Y was 1. Let's put it in there. X is negative 5, so we put that as negative 5. Uh, this A prime should about out front. Usually put it like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do 1, 5. That's it. Okay. It's, it's a method, uh, methodology that works for all of these if you do a table method. The reason why I want you to do this in the homework, I only gave you six problems. But the reason why I want you to do it thoroughly like this is next what we have to do is move it, flip it, reflect it. And if you have to do three things and you're just trying to, you know, it's going to get really complicated quick. So I want you to try to, uh, best you can, go ahead and use the table method. we got 10 minutes. No problem. All right, last point. Uh, okay, negative. And we're going to put one. Negative 2, and C prime ends up being 1, 2. Oh, okay. 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 All right. How do we feel about rotations in here? Pretty good. Scale from 1 to 5. Pretty good. Need a little bit more practice. I think this is the hardest part, like the conversion part. That might be the hardest. Eh. What is it? What is just organizing it? Yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? It's a uh, when. So it's a triangle right now, right? But what if it's a shape? You know, what if it's like, you know, some kind of trapezoid like this, right? That's going to be really hard in your head to be able to rotate it. So that's where we want to use the table method, especially when it's going to get complicated. We got time for one more. Let's do one more.
And yeah, that's why I only gave you six problems because if you can if you can focus on one and do it really well, focus on another type of problem. Um, let's see this one. This one, actually, that's a rotation. Let's skip that. Let's do one of these. Let's do a reflection. Yeah, let's do that one. All right, this is the last thing we got for the day. So uh, go ahead and make a quick graph. And honestly, guys, these graphs don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect. Just um, if you label the points, you could do this on plain paper. If you if you label G H and I, you can use like printer paper. If you label the point, it's fine. Yeah. Those at home that don't have graph paper. All right, Marco, perfect. Hmm. Really put that. And then maybe look in the notes, and we know we're doing a reflection on the y-axis. What is that formula going to be? How is x, y going to be um, changed by that? Uh, could I get a quick snapshot rotation reflection equation? Yes. Yeah, Kimberly, I see you. And if you're like, I just want to go for it, I want to try to do the table on my own, just, you can go to start if you're already done with it. I'm going to give everyone else one minute just because we're out of time soon. So... I'll start inputting it just as uh, the homework re requires. I'm going to put pre-images here. G. H. Oh. Oh. I. We have the reflection across the y-axis. And I like to put the formula for it there. So looking at the formula for rot reflection across the y-axis, let's just see. Across the y-axis, through the y-axis, right? x, y becomes negative x, y. Okay. That one's not that hard. That one's not that hard. That's it. So x, y becomes negative x, y. So if I'm doing this, if I'm doing this, I'm going to start the first one just to, to give you a heads up. I'm going to make the order pair a little bit larger here. Then I'm going to put negative space there for the x because I know this has to be negative x, y in my conversion. So you see how I set it up like that. And you'll want to do that for all of them. If it's a negative, just throw an extra parenthesis in there because now we have to look and see, okay, well, we had negative 3 for x, and we had 5 for y. 5 is going to stay the same. And remember, if you're like, how did I know negative x, y? That is only because it's the reflection across the y-axis. Reflection across the y-axis, so I know I'm going to use this conversion. So you got to have these handy. you got to keep these handy. These, uh, don't put these to memory. I'm going to allow you to have notes on any kind of test. Okay, so just have them handy. And then uh, let's go ahead and put our, our uh, prime image here. G prime is going to be 3, 5. All right. And we got like three minutes, so I'm just going to fill out the rest here with you. You see, you can even go in there and in your conversion, 
you can put them like that to start. Get all your conversions set up, and then just throw in the numbers and evaluate it. Right. I'm going to wrap it up, Judge. And negative 1, 2, negative 3, 0. One, two. All right. Anybody else get those prime points? End up there? Okay. So hold up for a sec. Let me wrap it up so it doesn't get loud in here. Let me just show you where this ends up. It's going to end up at G is going to be at three, five, up here. And no, H is. Five, nine, eight, there it is. That's where it rotates when it rotate or when it flips across the X, the X axis. Actually, it's upside down. All right. Thanks for watching at home. Let me just point out one thing for those at home and for in here. You won't be able to see it, but um, the the homework is the same homework as last week as the last homework except it is oh, this isn't going well except it is giving you new instructions okay so if we look at the document that's in the homework it says on it you guys in here won't be able to see it but uh it says disregard all the instructions for each number and it basically i could do this Disregard, no, that's not going to work either. Learning curve. Um, it's not hard instructions. I don't think I need to, I don't think I got to keep here for that. All right. All right. Thanks, guys at home for making this work. And let me stop this video. Okay, one sec. It's more chaotic than usual. Get up here.